Okay, going to use this uh, Cummins circular slide rule to figure out the horsepower on SV Seeker. Just a crude estimate. Went through and just, uh, let's say it was 60 tons and you had uh, 60 horsepower. You line up displacement and long tons versus the brake horsepower. There's 60 and 60. Then you get a speed, the length ratio here of about, about 0.9. And you take the point 0.9 and go over here, right down through here, and you line it up to... So you take the point 0.9 input and line it with the water line length of the boat. Here, get about a 65, get about a 7.2 knots. So with this calculator, I've gone through and generated these curves, which I'll just show here in a second. This was a calculator done by Cummins Mean Power. Okay, here's Atwood's book from 1931. The book actually came out in 1899. Show where Mr. Freud here went through and pulled a boat called the Greyhound with another boat with a line to the side. And they plotted the speed in knots versus the resistance in pounds here. You can see how it goes up as a curve. This was in 1871. This book here is the Theoretical Naval Architecture by Atwood. Okay, here I want to show just a rough crude estimate of the speed of uh, SV Seeker versus the power input. And what I used here is used the uh, old uh, circular slide rule that's by Cummins Means Power. I think this is from about 19, from the 60s. Uh, this is my dad's, the naval architect. And on this thing, you go through an input. Um, speed the length you go through and figure out use a displacement in tons long tons that's 2240 pounds and then you line this up to the horsepower here and then you go through and you get a speed to length ratio then you put that back down into here versus the water line length and I use 65 feet and then you can get the speed and knots and this is for a displacement hull something that's not going to plane so real quickly here's what I've uh, crude plot I've got out here this is the horsepower that's at the propeller now this is knots and so if you go through and plot from the circular slide rule here I varied the tonnage here's a 60 ton curve through here Here's a 65 in red, which I think what Seeker's at. Here's a 70. Green here, this is an 80 tons. Hey, just for kicks, I put a 40 ton and a 20 ton curve in. So, all these curves are for no wind and with a clean bottom boat. And if you go and look at some other types of curves and things, you've got nomographs like this in some old books. And it has to do with the shape of the beam and draft. You're going to get funny numbers at low speeds because you, the bottom condition has a lot to do with it. The higher end, uh, you tend to get the wave action that defines the maximum speed. So I went ahead and took an internet picture off here. And this is 64 feet, and I just scale, force that to be 7.4 inches. And that's where I got the 65 feet. So that just pulled that out of my butt, really. So if you took a given horsepower, a thir say 40 here, and you went up and you say you had 80 tons, you're about 5.4 knots. 70 tons, you get up here a little bit faster. So when you go through, you kind of hit sort of like a brick wall um, in a displacement hull. You can go a little bit faster, but you have to put tons of power. So this curve tends to go really steep over this way. So the, your mileage, the number of gallons you're going to get per mile or miles per gallon, nautical miles per gallon, whatever, gets really bad when you go fast. The same thing with the car. Um, it's almost like a cube action. 
So if you just want to go from A to B, what you really want to do, let's say you're at 65 tons, you really want to run here at 30 horsepower, so you're going like 5.4 knots to save gas. If you just putter around here and go, say, at uh, 22 horsepower, you're up here only do like 3.4 knots. So the faster and faster you go, more horsepower you add, you go faster, but you pay a lot big penalty to go as you approach the hull speed here. Um, now these ratios here of the link to speed ratio, I've got them over here. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. There's a 0 0.8, 0 0.9. 1 and 1.1. 1 .1. And I did this the other day because I was just kind of curious when they put the boat in the water what was going on. Uh, I think he had some numbers. He was going six or seven knots, six and a half one time and six, which would put it roughly down into here. 40 to 50 horsepower, and with his automatic transmission, I think you're going to probably burn, with the slip, probably 10 or 15 percent in heat. I think that's why he's trying to take the torque converter out. But So you're going to burn four or five uh horsepower just in raw heat on the con on the uh, converter through here. And if I go back here and look at some other curves, let me see if I can stop the camera here. Maybe just go up here, refocus. This curve here is the same data but I plotted it versus the log of the power, which means Here's one horsepower. This is three, roughly 10, 32, 100, 320, 1,000. So if you plot the speed in knots of the displacement hull, this is seeker, 65 uh, waterline length, and here's the displacement in tons. And all this is with this calculator, you can say it's full of it, but this is done from a different era where this was done just to kind of get you in the ballpark. And this is a, uh, so if you go through here and just say you had 100 horsepower, you could go get up here to about, say, 7.8 knots. If you went ahead and 60 tons, you're going to get up here to 8.5, 40 tons, you get up to be, I don't know, 9 point whatever. So this slope of this thing, because this is log, you've got to square a cube function through here. So you pay a lot of power to get just a little bit faster. So if you want to get from A to B, it's better to go down and not go close to the hull speed. You'll get uh, much better gas mileage. And you could say, well, maybe the boat's underpowered. Here's 10 horsepower here. Let's say you had 32 horsepower, you still can go five or six knots. Now, the problem with being underpowered, if you only had a 30 horsepower motor, 32, all this is with still a clean bottom plus no wind. If you get a lot of wind in here, all these curves are going to shift to where you need a lot more power. So, um, if you just went ahead and you tripled the went through in here, put 10 times the amount of power, you don't go 10 times as fast. So if you had just like this 60 ton curve here, and you went from 32 horsepower and you're about five knots and you went to 316, you go to 11. You gotta go 10 times the amount of power here and you're only gonna double the speed. So that you pay a big penalty for going fast. And again, this is the same data from the last curve, and I just plotted it on a log scale. Log, what I mean is that if you look down here, this is like a oscilloscope, 1, 2, 5, 10 horsepower, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1,000. So if you just have a hull, it's not going to play, and you can just have a, you know, dilithium crystals, warp phasers, whatever, warp drive. you got to put gobs of power to go a little bit faster because you just get kind of stuck in the wave pattern. Okay, here real quickly, this is the data I got from the uh, slide rule, or circular slide rule. I went ahead and I lined up the speed length ratio versus the horsepower 
and uh, you get the speed in knots and then here's the different uh, horsepower 20 28 12 and a half 5.7 for the different amount of tons and that's what I plotted on the curves this is the transmission AT545 I was just looking at this too trying to figure out what's going on here's the output shaft speed here's the engine RPM I went ahead and drew some curves where I took 4,000 output shaft and engine and put this one-to-one -one through here so like if you're in fourth gear this is the curve here third gear is here second gear first gear here's a two-to-one ratio four to one eight to one so you've got engine here and you've got a lot of slip going on through here the different cycles I think because I think on this you probably get about 10% slip is what I've read